Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Today I will begin a chapter on wireless hacking. So first off you need to know that there are different types of encryption. There is there is VEP or WEP and whoever still is using WEP doesn't really deserve to have wireless just saying <laughs> primarily because it's practically as if you had a free password or an open Wi-Fi it doesn't really matter, it's quite easy to crack, no problems, 3, 2, 1. However, uh, if you're using VPA or VPA2, that is another story that's quite difficult to crack, especially if the passwords are longer or something of a kind. There are different methods uh, for direct wireless hacking and I really would not recommend, I really would not recommend them in all circumstances. There are some circumstances which are favorable to these sort of methods. However, what is always better is to actually uh, get an IP of the router and then attack the router itself because usually it has far more vulnerabilities than the VPA2 encryption that you are trying to crack. However, since we are cracking wireless, I'm just going to go ahead and type in ifconfig if here and you will notice that I don't have a wireless interface here. Why is that? Well, even though I have a network integrated card, wireless one, within my laptop, this is a virtual machine and virtual machines do not support integrated network cards. They can only go through your main through your host machine and in such a way virtual virtual machines are secure so you can install all sorts of stuff on them, viruses, etc. and you'll still be safe, they won't be infecting you and they won't be able to disrupt the normal functioning of your uh, host machine. However, there are methods where you can get a USB uh, wireless card and plug it in and you can set up a pass-through for your wireless machine and in such a way gain access to wireless. However, password cracking from a virtual machine is not a good idea. I mean, it's a terrible idea, especially using VirtualBox. Maybe if you were using Xen or something of a kind where you have 90 to 95 uh, native performance, that would be great. But using VirtualBox for password cracking, that is a really bad idea, primarily because, uh, let me just show you here. If you go up, if you go device devices, and I can click on, uh, sure, why not? I'm just going to go ahead and click on network settings and then I will get the menu for the other things. So let's just go ahead and click on general. Is it here? No, system, sorry. Look, first of all, it has base memory. This can be altered when the machine is off. You cannot change the settings here while the machine is turned on. First of all, it says that I have two gigs of RAM available for this particular virtual machine. Now that's great for day-to-day -day operations, especially for Linux that requires 512 megabytes to run. However, if you want to crack, if you want to brute force a password, uh, if you want to take that path, if you want to use a brute force method just by generating huge password lists and trying to guess it, this is not really a good amount of RAM. Actually, this is a terrible amount of RAM for such a task. And if we go ahead and click on the processor, you will see that, okay, execution cap is 100%, but we only have a single core assigned. It says here one CPU core in the upper bar, in the upper status bar. It says processors. It's gray at the moment because you can't change the amount of processors that a machine is using the, uh, while it's running so that there, that that makes no sense of whatsoever you wouldn't be able to do that in the real world either maybe on some large servers or something like that but even they're very doubtful that you can actually swap a processor that's mainly for swapping disks or adding ram or something of a kind in any case uh, it has only one cpu assigned to it i know it says here four but i have an intel i7 inside and uh, the virtual box supports only for four CPU cores for its machines, and it is taken take it take it into consider. You should take into consideration that you really won't need more than four uh, for your virtual machines, especially if you're performing some testing tasks or 
I don't know, even if you're programming, unless you're doing something specific that has that is strongly related to graphics, you won't be needing that many cores or anything of a kind. One CPU is perfect, that's fine, you won't need any more. So, anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and click, oh, wait, acceleration, yep, never mind. I'm gonna click OK here, and I just wanted to show you that in order to demonstrate that the resources of your virtual machine are simply not sufficient in order to support a brute force method. Uh, as I said, you can actually buy for about 20 bucks somewhere in the store a, net, a network card, a USB network card with wireless one. Plug it in, pass through the ports, and it's going to work, but it's going to be terribly slow. What you need to do is either set up a dual boot, or if you are running a Linux machine as your host machine, you can do what I, what I will do now. Let me just move away from this. Excellent. So because my main machine is Fedora Linux, I have installed all the necessary tools on it. Pretty much this, you can install the same tools on Fedora as you can on Kali. And I will be doing my pen testing from here, from Fedora. I will exit the virtual machine. I will no longer use Kali for this purpose. However, if you are a Windows user, if you don't have a native Linux system as your host machine, you will also be able to do this in Windows. I will show you the installation process alone. I will not show the actual method, but principles are the same. Primarily because when you do it in Windows, you have to use the GUI mode. And quite frankly, for these sort of things, I personally do not like to do them via GUI. It's far more effective to do them from the terminal. So some of the tools that we will need, I will just mention them here. And feel free to read up on them a little bit in the net as you progress through the course and then, and then uh, go through the videos as well. So there's a lot of extra information out there on the net, especially if you're facing some sort of bugs or something of a kind. Uh, also feel free to post it in the question section. If something is not working, I will be more than happy to try to fix it for you. So just type in uh, yum search. Oops, sorry, yum search. This is one of the tools that we will need, air crack dash ng press enter and it should find it shortly. There we go. Uh, Aircrack is in the default repositories of Fedora and you will be able to find it there without any sort of problem. So it says Aircrack dash ng x86 64. This is a standard for wireless and it says sniffer v v vep and vpa psk key cracker. We're interested in this part, key cracker. Basically, you can install it anywhere. We can even install it on the virtual machine, capture the file on the host machine, transfer transfer the file there, but there really is no point to do that. Now, we will install it, and I will teach you how to use it. There are lots more things related to Aircrack, but there is one more, there is one more uh, tool that we will use that employs a completely different method, uses a completely different way of cracking wireless passwords. And we'll mainly be talking about VPA and VPA2 passwords, encryption methods. I will do a brief demonstration of how to do, how to crack the WEP. But, I mean, chances of you encountering WEP in today's world are practically non-existent. I mean, if just you uh, open up your cell phone, uh, I don't know if you're using Android or uh, Apple's phones or whatever whatever or windows phones and whatever else is out there just take a look at the wireless networks around you and take a look at the encryption methods because they will be shown to you you will almost never and see web if you ever do see it it's practically open wi-fi because web has been cracked it takes a very short amount of time to break it without any sort of problems you don't need to you don't need to use any sophisticated methods of any kind or sort a child could crack it without any problems basically just follow through the procedure and that's it now as i was saying there is another method of doing this for vpa and the tool name is reaver reaver 
Now, Reaver is not in Fedora's default repository, so we will need to go through the installation process in order and find it on the net. But basically what Reaver does is guesses the pins on your router. So most routers these days have pin authentication whereby you press a button and everybody around and everybody around you can connect to that to that router basically. Uh, these things have been invented primarily for win Windows users. Uh, rarely, very rarely, will you find a Linux with support for pins, primarily because the method is highly insecure. I mean, that is really one of the downsides of wireless. If you're using pin authentication, you should definitely disable it on your home routers as it enables malicious attackers to basically uh, take your Wi-Fi, get your IP address, and from there move on to more serious things. I will show you how to disable these things as well on one of my routers that I have here. Uh, I think I have a TP link or something like that. I will plug it in later on and show to you what it does. But in any case, as a part of the Aircrack package, you will get a few other programs which we will use. And later on, there is one in Aircrack package uh, one program in aircraft package that enables you to perform a DOS attack on wireless networks around you. So you will be able to pretty much de-authenticate whoever you want, whenever you want, as long as two conditions are met. The first condition is proximity, that you are close enough to the network. And the second condition is that you actually have to scan in monitor mode with your network card and figure out what is going on around you, what are the... what what is the MAC address of that access point and what is the MAC address of the person you want to jam. This is not that difficult to do. This is easy. Uh, both MAC addresses are public information. Pretty much all you need to do is listen for them. And that is what monitor mode is. Basically, network cards have a lot of modes that they can operate in. And, well, maybe not, a lot. maybe not a lot. I think it was six or something like that. But there are only two which are of interest to us. There is the promiscuous mode where you get where your network card will only process traffic that is meant exclusively for it, regardless of, I don't know, capturing some other traffic that is being transmitted wirelessly through the air. I mean, just think about it. You have so many wireless access points around you and they are all communicating with devices and it's not like that wireless access point can send a signal in a specific direction to your device. No, it sends it in a spherical fashion and your device catches it. A lot of other devices catch it, but since the information is encrypted and since the information is not for them, uh, they immediately figure out that it's not for them, namely your network cards figure it out and they immediately disregard the information, they don't do anything with it. However, if you put your network cards into monitor mode, they will actually take all of this traffic, process it, and see what they can get from it. Some of it is encrypted, most of it is encrypted, but some of it isn't, like the MAC addresses, which can't be encrypted. And that's the that's the bright side of it all. You can take it and you can jam whoever you want. You can deny wireless access to pretty much every to everybody within range with just having your laptop and no extra devices are needed. This is all pure software. You don't need any extra devices. Of course, it is necessary that your network card supports monitor mode. I will. Sh there is a compatibility list on the net. I will show it to you uh, in the follow-up tutorial. But for the time being, I just wanted to introduce you to the chapter and to see what we shall be doing. So before you, uh, I would advise, you don't have to, of course, and you will be able to fully follow through the next tutorial without doing this. But I would just advise typing aircrack-ng on Google or your whatever your favorite search engine is and type in Reaver. Just read the first post, read the first couple of sentences of the first post that comes by and see if you can collect some information there. Then you can continue on watching the next video where I will show you how to install these things. I will show you how to install aircrack-ng on Windows and I will attempt a Reaver as well but sometimes Reaver tends to break on Windows and that can be problematic but primarily I will show you how to install aircrack-ng I'll show you how to use it there a bit it's not that hard there's a graphical interface practically you can just click through it no problems however I restate once again that you do that you should have 
a Linux host machine which you can use, to which you have access, primarily because a lot of these tools are a lot faster on Linux machines. They work much better, they're faster, and quite frankly, they are easier to install. Plus, you get a higher degree of anonymity. Anyway, I bid you all farewell, and I'll see you in the follow-up tutorial.